Zoom recording, there we go. Okay. Cool, so we're underway. So when is a presentation actually a presentation? So that's probably a strange question for you, but realistically, I think that many people get really concerned about um, having to do presentations. They look at their diary and they think, oh, I've got you know, six meetings, eight meetings this week, what am I doing? I want you to relax on most of them because most of the time when you're presenting to people, you're not actually presenting something to sell. There are two types of presentations you do. One is a developmental presentation and the second is a transactional presentation. So those of you that are in our circle of excellence on the call, the developmental um, basically was the presentation was the one that I did whereby, you know, I ask you a lot of questions and I do the strategy call with you and that sort of thing. And then it gets to a point in there where generally speaking, you guys say to me, okay, what's next and how do we work further? And then I shift you to a meeting that's totally transactional. Now, the psychology behind this is that when you tell somebody, um, as any of you have been to our masterminds or on one of our pods or anything like that, whenever you've been to something where we say to you up front, don't worry, we've got nothing to sell you today, um, then we obviously don't have anything to sell you today. What it does is it does two bits of relaxation. One for the person who thinks, oh, I can relax a bit. They're not trying, I'm not here to be sold to. And number two for you, who then can work more on delivering value or work more on actually, you know, building a relationship with somebody. And then that can lead to a second meeting. And you wouldn't do this if you were selling bottles of water, obviously but any sort of consultancy, coaching product, large service, web design company, any sort of service, if you're an accountant or something like that, then you move it to a second meeting and the second meeting is all about the transaction. So how do we actually do the transaction? So with that, think of your presentations in terms of them being transactional or in terms of them being, being developmental. Generally in any week, I would probably do 15 to 20 meetings a week is my norm. Um, and so during that, probably at least 10 of those are developmental meetings. So therefore, they're pretty easy for me. I can do them uh, anywhere. Um, you know, prior to Zoom, I used to actually lie on the couch or put my feet up or sit outside or something like that. Uh, these days, I've probably got to sit more upright because people like to do video soon, which quite frankly is a waste of time because people don't think well when you're staring them in the face, but then moving to the transactional presentation, which is the second presentation, which should be very much eyeballed as well. So I'm going to ask you a number of questions as we go through this, but firstly, five things your presentation absolutely must have. So, and this presentation, I'm talking about a transactional presentation. On this series, we're not going to talk about a developmental presentation. We're talking about a transactional presentation here. So five things your transactional presentation must have. Firstly, it's got to have authority in there. They have to know that you are the expert. Your company is the expert, that you know what you're doing. Secondly, it's got to have novelty in there. So in other words, you've got to appear different than you know, all the other people that do what you do. So it's got to really strike them. Jeepers, these guys are really good. And actually what they do is really quite different or quite unique. It's got to have that uniqueness in there. Then you must have a three-dimensional offer. So to remind you guys to what a three-dimensional offer is, and for those of you that are seeing it for the first time, your offer, anything you're trying to sell them must cover the three dimensions. Firstly, it must either make or save them money. Um, if it doesn't do that, then you're probably going to struggle to sell it because they're the two fundamentals. Secondly, there has to be a sense of community, a sense of camaraderie. You know, if you look at all the social medias, if you look at Facebook, or if you look at even Virgin Group or Apple, there's this sense of community built around that. If you look at Circle of Excellence itself, the sense of community or tribe built around it. So it has to have that second dimension there. And the third dimension is that it has to have some sort of technology with it. Now, technology doesn't mean hardware or software, unless, of course, you're in the hardware or software business. 
technology means a system, an A to Z. What I'm showing you here could be a technology, five things that I'm gonna share with you during the time that we work together, okay? So it has to have that. Then third thing is that you need storytelling in your transactional presentation. It has to take people on a journey from current state to desired state. Let's call it future proofing. Um, so in that there has to be a hero's journey. That means how you found the magic bullet, how you found the way to do it, why this way is the best way, et cetera, et cetera. Why all of the other competitors don't matter, why you are significant. Then of course, to back that up, you have to have proof in the order of either case studies or testimonials. Video testimonials always trump um, you know, written testimonials. And if you have a written testimonial, a written testimonial with a photograph is better than a video testimonial, sorry, better than a written testimonial without a photograph. And if you have a written testimonial with a photograph with you and the person in it, it's even stronger still. And then finally, and strangely, you may think this is crazy that I have to put this in there, but I rarely see a transactional presentation with a call to action. So often when people share with me their presentations, I go, so when did you ask them to buy here? Oh, what do you mean? So where are you actually getting them to take action? So make sure that you have that trigger point that boom, pull the trigger. Now it could be just a question. It could be a question mark on a slide. It could be this picture here, which is stock off keynote because I added this slide literally half an hour ago and then I got sidetracked and didn't actually put change the picture on it. So it could be a nice stock photo on it. But every time you see that, it reminds you to ask the call to action question. And my call to action question in transactions, very simple. I get to the end of things and I say, so what do you think? I just ask them that. And then I, I listen to them. By the way, if they're really kinesthetic, I say, what do you feel? So, or what do you see in this? Now, so you can use that and change it depending on what you've got. And then that can lead you to, what do you see the next steps being? Okay, so we're gonna move into um, now some fun and games for you guys. What's hot in slides, pictures, and words? I'm going to show you three slides now. And what I want you to do is I want you to put in the chat A, B, or C. So in other words, which one's the most attractive to you? Here's your first option. We're gonna be selling freedom to you. So this is uh, the purpose of uh, our product or our service is to give you more freedom. So I'm gonna use either this visual, this is A, you can see it in the bottom right-hand corner there, um, or I am going to use this visual, visual B to illustrate freedom to you, or I am going to use this visual, visual C. So let me show those to you again. There's visual A to share freedom with you. There's visual B to share freedom with you. There's visual C. So let me stop the share for the moment and let's go to the chat. Let's have a look. Uh, everybody's picking A so far. Okay, so we've got a lot of A's. We've got a C from Greg. Hi, Greg. A, A, A. Oh, Sarah, well done. Yeah. B from Sue. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so let's jump back in. I want to explain these to you. So, oh, so my presentation, you have to get out of it before you jump back in. Always trips me up on Zoom, that one. Still after doing like a thousand Zoom calls. You have to leave the presentation before you go in. That's C, let's go back to, to A. Okay. So most of you picked A to illustrate freedom and you're 100% right in most of the situations. Now let's give me give you the why. Firstly is that this individual um, can represent any one of us. So it's sort of an ordinary person. It's a very modern photo. So it's using the blurred backgrounds. It's using the sort of more harsh filters. So you can tell that this photo is not from 1975. You can tell that it's quite a modern look. Um, freedom is exposed by the show of the hands as well. So you're free, you can engulf the whole world and you're also looking into the sunshine, but also you're free because this particular woman 
<clears throat> is a photographer, so therefore she can do what she wants. She has a freedom type of lifestyle. Now, there's nothing wrong with this photo. And Sue, you picked this photo. This photo is excellent to represent freedom for a very specific audience. This is not going to appeal so much to a primarily male audience. This is not going to appeal so much necessarily to the more corporate woman. You're going to have much more chance with this appealing to a greater um, audience. So unless you want to change out slides for every presentation that you do, then this photo is not going to be as solid as the photo before. But if you're in the more creative space, if you're in, this is much more modern again, if you're in the more design space, if you're in the more hip space, I think, then this is definitely the type of slide that you can. And this is a no-no. And the reason why is because um, it's just too old. These are the type of slides and type of photos that were commonplace 10 or 15 years ago. So it's going to date your ideas and date the person's mind in how you're going to give them freedom to something that's 10 or 15 years old for the most part. Now, if you've got, if this is a theme and you've got this going across a website or something like that, you may be able to use it, you may be able to get away with it. But for most of you, readdressing the psychology is what we're talking about today of a sales presentation. This is your strongest, that's your second strongest, and this is your least strongest. So just take that on board and you may disagree with me, but hey, I'm probably done more sales presentations than pretty much everybody on this call. So I do understand this and this is just older technology. So now let's have a look at something different. So color filters are more modern. It appears to the, appeals to the reality mindset and it looks like everybody. Let's look at the next picture. Now we're gonna share coaching. I want you to look at these four pictures. So you're marketing a coaching program. Which one of these four pictures are you going to um, use to market your coaching program? Again, let's go to the chat. Um, you're going to choose picture, picture one, picture two, picture three, or picture four as part of your transactional presentation to market your coaching program. So I'll just give you a second to have a look at that and then I'll stop the share. And let's go to the chat. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got a lot of twos. Let's go up here. Four, twos are strong. Twos are one. Two are a three, a two and a four. Okay, let's go back uh, to the, to the uh, presentation and let's show you what we've got. Fun, right? To, to look at all these things. So one is pretty much a no-no. Okay, and the reason why is because for a start, the person who I believe is a woman's uh, fingers bent, so that's just really odd, okay? Um, and then you've got the palm out with the suit that's not really a modern suit. This looks like a 1990s, early 2000s cheap bit of stock photography. So then I wanna go to number three. Number three is also just a little bit cheap. And unless you really, you could use this in a, in a super corporate basis where you're talking to middle management and you need to spell things out <clears throat> where people don't have much vision and, and they're sort of really live in barriers, number three would be okay. Uh, number two and number four are great. Number two is a safe choice. Why? Because there's a totally 2021 coaching meeting. You've got your Starbucks coffee or your, you know, mug and bean if you're in South Africa or your Costa coffee if you're in England or, you know, or your uh, Columbus coffee if you're in New Zealand, et cetera, et cetera, sitting next to you. Um, you know, either one of these people could be the coach, the other person's listening. So it's a discussion. It's sort of how it is. It's a little blurred, it's hip, it's modern, right? So this is a safe bet if you want to illustrate something with coaching. Then psychologically, number four is actually your strongest picture. But it's going to relate on you telling a bit of story around it. 
So if you're not a good storyteller, if you're not good at imagery in, in your story, stick with something like number two. If you're a great storyteller, look at number four. And then you could simply share something like, have a look at this picture there, what is it? And people say, oh, it's a labyrinth, okay? So, okay, it's a labyrinth or a maze, they might say. So essentially, I want you to think of your journey um, in getting towards your goal as this labyrinth. And I want you to think of us as the key holders here. We're gonna be able to get you right to the center very, very quickly in the shortest possible time with the least possible anguish to go towards that. Does that make sense? People say yes, right? So they could really establish a coaching journey with you based on the labyrinth. So well done, you're doing well guys, okay. Let's now look at using words in a presentation. So again, I want you to look at these three slides and I want you to pick A, B or C. Remember, nothing's right or wrong. It's fun to play the game here. And um, all of these, everything's appropriate in certain things, but some are stronger than others um, as, and being more generic. So now we're going to talk freedom again. So here's our original photo and I've just put some words in here. We promise you will achieve freedom, okay? So this is your option A. Here's option B. We promise you'll achieve freedom. And here is option C for you. We promise you'll achieve freedom. So C, B, or A. Okay, let's, uh, let's stop the screen share there and let's go with C, B, or A. What have we got? We've got Bs, full range of Bs. A's, Bs, 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 Bs. Okay. All right, a lot of, lot of smart cookies on this call. So B is your best option. Now, if you want to illustrate freedom, you've got the picture here, but the writing is a little bit not formatted correct for the screen. Um, also, as you'll see when I, when I go to the next one, uh, what I've done with it. And also it's just sort of, it's just sort of stuck there. So it's, it's not really part of the image. It's sort of just on top of the image. This one brings the image together. Now you'll see the word, word spelled out there. So if somebody looks at the picture, they now get, they, psychologically they get that this means freedom. It doesn't mean anything else. It simply means freedom. And the promise can be smaller and above, as you can see. Now, also what I've done here is I've put a shadow on the words. So it makes the words pop out of the page a little bit. Whereas if you look at this, there's no shadow on the words. So the words are very flat, two dimensional against the page. This is a much more three dimensional picture. Now I'm sharing this stuff with you guys today because these subtleties are what get you sales. And sales is a combination of of everything, it's not one thing. When you look at a great salesperson, it's not one thing that gets them there. Um, for instance, most of you don't realize uh, that those of you that are in Circle of Excellence that I use a very, very subtle um, tool in Circle of Excellence. In fact, I haven't got the Circle of Excellence presentation open, but at some point here, I'll, I'll share it with you um, and, just, and you'll get it because you've all seen it because the Circle of Excellence presentation that I share with you, um, there's only one or two slides that I generally swap out of it. Um, generally case studies I swap out and things like that. But the basis of the presentation is the same. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do there, but let's move on to this slide. This is okay. Now, it probably is okay if this is more your style, but, and it's better than A, but to me, it's just not as strong as this. Again, it's two-dimensional, it's see-through, so that's okay. They're now speaking, so you've given them a personality, whereas you want the personality to sit with you during this. So let's look at using more words, A, B, or C, okay? So here we've got um, a presentation. This could be a brochure. Now, I've made these more wordy, so I just want you to look at this. This is a brochure that you could be using to help you sell. So this is option A, this is option B for you, okay? Again, it's a brochure you could be using to sell. And here is option C, 
Again, this is a brochure that you could be using to sell. So let's just go with um, and see what the chat says there. So let's go into, we've got lots of A's coming up. B, there's a C there. Hey, Antony, great to see you here, my friend. Um, A's, A, Colleen, A, B, okay. So again, lots of interesting and very, very different uh, points of view. So let's let's jump back in and, and see which one's the, the best here. So here we go. And all of these can work. And it really depends on what you're trying to do. But what I'm trying to share with you here today is simply how to get it more cleaner. So most of you chose A, and this is actually from one of our brochures. This is a page in the Octopus Certified Coach brochure. Now, what you can see here, the reason why most of you chose it, and I didn't try and give you too much look at it so you'd realize it was one of ours, because most of you haven't seen it, what most of you saw is the big statement saying, taking you above the line and a step-by-step -step basis that does that. So remember that if you were on our call with uh, Rikas, our web designer, he talks about real estate on a web page and people will never read the fine print. People just see big things and general pictures. They can't take it all in. So unless they sit at home and read the whole brochure, which they're unlikely to do, this is what they're going to see. Um, most of you didn't choose this. And I got this actually online from people who are sharing how they design brochures. So this is just too busy. There's too many points. Nothing really stands out. Be inspired is good, but because it's written upwards, our eyes don't naturally go to it. They're gonna go more to advanced education. So there's just too much clutter on this page. And then this is our Global Expert Institute brochure. So again, what you see here is two things. You really probably just saw the blueprints there. So some of you like that. It's again, this is designed to have detail and it goes into detail of what does it do and who should it become. It's appropriate in certain areas, but if you like, if you have a look, the look and feel of this is much more corporate than the look and feel of that. And the look and feel of this is a bit of fun corporate as well. So whatever's right for you is appropriate. So now let's have a look at some sales slides. Um, I think this is my last A, B or C. So let's roll with this. Let's have a look at some sales slides now. So here's a slide that you could use in a transactional sales meeting. This could be option one. So this is A for you. I forgot to put the A on here. So consider this A. Then this is option two, in other words, B. So this is case study. So that's B. And then this is C. And this is a very, very simple slide that is part of um, a transactional sale. All of these are part of transactional sales. So do you like this one? A, do you like this one? B, or do you like this one? C. Which one of these would you most likely put in your transactional sales presentation? Let's go to the chat again for the last time here. Okay, so we've got Bs coming up. Lots of Bs, a C, thanks Sue. Anyone else, Bs? B, 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 B. Okay, well done team. I think we've got enough to, to uh, to give you some feedback on it. So let's jump in. I hope you're enjoying this and I hope you're getting to just see a little bit of, of how sales presentations should be put together. So this is very busy. Now I've seen a lot of sales presentations, um, particularly in the B2B space that do stuff like this. They have a chart and then they explain it and you know, there's sort of other words, but nothing here captures your eye. All that captures your eye is it's sort of like a, a bunch of dots, right? So you don't, you don't really take this in. So as somebody who is trying to sell this to you, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bog you down in detail. You have no choice psychologically than to engage detail with this. So when you engage detail, it goes away from storytelling and when it goes away from storytelling, 
then I have less chance of triggering, you know, your prefrontal cortex, which basically is going to, to open up your, you know, your mammalian brain, if you like, and your nurturing side and your dream brain and everything like that. I'm going to be stuck in insect brain here going through, well, 37% of 25% in the first year is going to give you X. I have no choice with this one. So this is not an option, okay? Unless you're using it to just illustrate something as a passing slide. Now, this is straight out of Circle of Excellence. And um, this is not what I wanted to show you before. I have to bring up the Circle of Excellence presentation, which I'll do in a second. But this is a case study. Now, I want to share with you um, the philosophy behind this. Firstly, on all of our case studies, we stand for three things, prosperity, freedom, and purpose. We badge each of our case studies with one of those. So there's the big freedom badge. It's, you don't even know why it's there. So it's totally subliminal. Then I bold words of what we did. So we've got red, their critical issue, then bolded words, imprints and blind spots. Then as you see down below the growth, and also as you see up the top, it has a case study number. So when you look at this, this is literally their circle of excellence number. So when you look at this, you go, wow, they've got at least um, 85 case studies. I was actually gonna put in for today's presentation case study number one, but, um, but I decided not to use that because it will appear to you guys as case study number one. Then of course the picture really helps. Then this one is out of our Octopus Certified Coach presentation. And what we do here is we have, this needs storytelling. So it's great, but it needs storytelling. 90% of what we teach at university is a waste of time. That's by a Harvard University professor and the average MBA costs over $80,000. And if you look below, this is what's in an average MBA. Applied statistics, accounting, human resources, business communication, business ethics, business law, business strategy, finance, managerial economics, management, entrepreneurship, marketing, supply chain management. Can I ask any of you people on this call, have you ever, ever used any of these subjects? More than about 5% of your business career? Answer, probably not. So therefore, for most of you thinking you should get an MBA, it's going to totally waste your time. Okay, so let's move on. Thank you for that. Who would like to run some slides or brochures by me live on this call? Um, you'll have the opportunity to do that a little bit later on. So what I want you to do now is to simply just go and load up or go and find a brochure or a sales presentation or a page or, or something like that and load it up for me and we'll get into that. Um, a little bit later on. I'm just going to quickly show you the Circle of Excellence presentation and the slide you've all seen, which is the psychology of sales. Um, where is it? Okay. Got it loaded. Okay, so you should be able to see questions on how this can work for you. So this is, uh, this is the part in Circle of Excellence when I finish the formal presentation and I go in and I ask you questions on how this can work for you. What most of you don't see is the background, which is actually a photo of Dennis Giannoutsos, who's a Circle of Excellence member and um, literally says massive profits in 2020 sitting behind you. There Now, I probably should change that to 2021, but you can see it's in the business section. So as we're asking questions here, I go into this, I use an actual case study as a background um, for this as well. So there's a lot of subliminal stuff that goes on in selling. Okay, so with that, let's uh, stop the share for a minute and I'll jump out of the Circle of Excellence presentation. I just thought I'd share that tidbit with you because um, even there's photos, I'm looking at photos of Landy and I standing by the tree and all that type of thing that I use in the Circle of Excellence presentation. So let's jump back into our other presentation now because we've got more to cover. Uh, quite a bit more actually. So, uh, so we're going to do quite a lot more. Remember now that you have to go and find, if you want to, any presentations or any brochures or anything like that you'd like me to have a quick look at on the call. Happy to do that. Let's move on. 
So I want to share with you how to build bridges over objections. So at some point here during the sales presentation, you're going to get some objections, more than likely. And I would just want to deal with the big ones today. So don't you hate it when they say, I'll think it over and get back to you. Now, I want to share why that happens. And 90% of the cases, when somebody says, I'll think it over and get back to you, there's only two reasons why it happens. Reason number one, 80% of the time, they are confused and you have not done a good job of giving them clarity on what it is you do, what their options are, what it's gonna cost, how it's gonna roll out and how it's gonna enhance what they do. So anytime anybody says, I think it over, then you've got to say to yourself, damn it, I confuse them. And I get it too from time to time when I get, I think it over, then I go, damn it, I've confused them. The only way to go back through that is to basically say, that's no problem. Take some time and think it over. However, let's just go back through it. So make, make sure you've got everything in your mind. So at the start of our Zoom call today, we talked about this and this and this problem for you. I've got the problems right, haven't I? Yes. Then we talked about what you've done in the past to solve that and none of that's worked, right? So you are where you are and you're a bit stuck. I'm right in that, aren't I? Yes. Okay, so then we looked at some options for you and we decided the best option was this. And we decided it for these three reasons. Am I correct? You know, three-dimensional money, community, technology. Yes, okay. And we decided that the way in which we could roll it out was this and this and this. Yes. Okay, so apart from everything that we've shared there, what else is it that you decided that you needed to think about? Now, I haven't told this story to too many people in a long time, but the first time that was used on me was many years ago when I was buying a new car. And I was literally in the car dealer and I said to them, I wanna think it over. And the car dealer said, the salesperson said to me, okay, no problem, take as much time as you need, but I just wanna make sure I've got everything right. When you came in here today, you came in here to buy a car. Yes, that's correct. When you told me what you wanted, we looked at this and this and this car, you chose this one, yes. Then you test drove it and you loved it, yes. And then you um, looked at the financial options and everything could work financially for you, yes. And then we looked at the options on here, yes. And you were happy dealing with me as your salesperson where you don't have a problem with me, do you? No, so everything's fine, yes. So apart from everything I've mentioned, what else was it that you had to think over? And I realized that he had me and I realized I couldn't lie. And I, I had to say to him, well, if I buy this car without showing my partner at the time this car, she's going to kill me. He said, well, where does she work? And I told him, he said, well, how about we drive to that work? And if she likes the car, will you buy it? I said, yes. So we drove there, she okayed it and I bought it. So often the think it over is because they're confused. And the second reason, the 20% is because there's something they haven't told you. Now, mine was the 20%, so you can really, you can get that out. The other 20% is they're not actually the decision maker. Somebody else in their family or in their company is, or they don't, just don't make decisions at that level or you've got it all wrong. So by going back and putting it in place time and time again for them, so you agreed to this, you thought that, you did that, then that's going to really help you. When they say, I just have to run it by somebody, their wife, their husband, the cat, the dog, their business partner, 10 other people, um, you only have one option. So I would ask them a, a blunt point. I, I actually, I'm pretty brutal with this and a couple of you have experienced this on the call. In fact, I don't think I've got one person on the call who I said to them, that's just not gonna work for me under any circumstance. <laughs> I literally said that to them. But, um, and then I followed up by saying, the reason why is I want you to tell me the top five things that I just mentioned to you that this is going to do for you. Instantly, they get stuck on two or three. So I said, okay, so it's pretty obvious you're not going to be able to explain this just having looked at it once. So what I think we should do is we should all get on a call together. I'm going to run through the abridged version of this. It's also going to help you lock it in because I know you want it, right? Yes, of course I do. 
And then I'm going to be able to talk to your partner, wife, dog, cat, um, and they're going to be able to okay it as well. So can we set up that for? So you have no other choice than having to do the sales presentation again, but obviously you don't have to do it in so much detail and go into all the storytelling and that type of thing. Then thirdly, you get what happens if. Um, what happens if I run out of money? What happens if I can't make payments? What happens if you die? What happens if you know COVID locks us up again? All of those sort of questions, you have to have prepared standard answers for those questions as well. And you have to be ready for that. How do I know it will work? That's a question that, that I don't get. Um, maybe I get it once in a blue moon. I sort of get the question, when does this fail? Um, if you can tell me when it actually fails, then that would be useful. But um, for, for many of you, you might get, how do I know this will work? So the answer to that is to use case studies, to have more case studies at hand, and also to be prepared to tell people when it doesn't work. So for instance, if it's circle of excellence and I get that question, honestly, the only time it's never worked is when people don't do the work. And I can give them two or three illustrations of that where people simply don't do the work and or don't communicate. And apart from that, we'll go quiet. That's when things don't work. So you have to have an answer ready for that. So they're the big ones, but the main one there is I'll think it over and get back to you or I just have to run it by such and such. And you've got some good answers for that. So here's three tips for including improving your cash flow this week. One of them might go into next week, but certainly in the next week. And then what we'll do is we'll get into anybody who wants to share um, any of their stuff or has any questions around this. So firstly, return to previous people who have said no to you. Just because they said no before doesn't mean that they're not ready now. So it doesn't mean that they didn't want to do business with you ever before. Okay, so make a list of people from the past three years and reconnect with them. Start the process from scratch, not form scratch, from scratch, and start it again fresh. Come back to them with something new. So Hey, Mr. Strange Guy with hand over mouth. We spoke uh, three years ago, but I know we're doing something really incredible now that you just haven't seen. Um, I often have to do this with people. They say, oh, I know what you guys do. And I say, no, you don't. You have actually no idea what we do anymore. You think you knew what we do because you saw us last in 2015. That's not at all what we do now. Okay, so make sure then you can get referred back in or have a mutual contact. So if I had a list of say 30 names that I thought that I might be able to sell that I've you know, worked on for the past couple of years, but are on my cold case list, then I might look at who they're connected to on LinkedIn. And if they're connect connected to Robert O'Brien or Paula Quincy, I might say, hey, Paula, can you refer me to Joe Bloggs? Um, I wanna pick up a conversation. I talked to them a couple of years ago um, can you drop them a note? And I'd write the note saying, hey, I was talking to Mike Hancock recently. I know you talked to him a couple of years ago. He was just about to get it back in touch. Geez, you know, they've got some really good things or whatever. You write the note, you see how it works. So returning to previous notes, go back this week, have a look through your diaries for the last three years. There is business in there that you can close in the next one to two weeks without doubt. Number two, get a pilot going. Some of you have tried to go all in with people to, to sell them your biggest product, to you know, get them to, to put their hundred of their staff through what you do. So start a pilot so that you're making yourself essential to their business and making yourself essential to what they do. Or start low and then build up over time. So let's just get one or two people involved in this or Let's just start at, the, uh, at the, the, the low thing. I mean, software does this so well. They give you their free version. Then you like it, then you go, gee, I really want the extra features and now you're a paid person. And then before you know it, you're paying hundreds of dollars a month for the software. So start low and build up over time and get champions inside the organization who are raving about you. Get people who are raving about you in a company. So if you're dealing with a company or in a family or something like that, get people talking you up 
get people saying, even if you're just working with one person, imagine you're working with one person at Vodafone globally or Apple. So, you know, if that's what you're doing, then you are working inside that organization already. And remember, if you want to get global, they're connected to other people around the world. Here's number three, do a preview or a sample. Invite everybody who said no to you in the last three years to some new product launch or something new that you're doing, some sort of preview or some sort of sample of what you're doing. Just has to be 20 minutes long and give them a QR code so that they can engage further. So that way, I do this on webinars a lot where I have a QR code that basically allows people to come on to one-on-ones with me. Uh, Anthony's on this call. We, we met through that way, engaged through a QR code on a, on a webinar. There's been uh, numerous others over the years as well. So doing that sort of thing really works for people also, but go back and look at people around you. Look at people you've had meetings with. Even if you never pitch them anything, bring them into something like this. You know, if you've got 30 people that say yes and 15 turn up on your sample, you're going to get some business. And it's something that you can do pretty quickly in the next week. So with that, I wanna stop the share now and uh, giving you lots of good ideas for this morning. Who here has got something that they would uh, like to throw by me? So, Philippe, I see you saying you, you haven't been talking to the decision maker. You saw that a lot, but you're asking much more. Um, what if they say, I can't afford it? Sarah, that's a great question. Your, your prospecting is wrong. So, um, meaning that you haven't done enough with them. So, let me give it to you straight. When you pitch somebody and you go through all that effort to have them say, I can't afford it, then it feels in your heart like rejection. It feels like you've poured your heart and soul on the table for them and they've rejected you. So never put yourself in that position. That's why if you use the 10 questions format that uh, we've got in the Octopus and in Circle of Excellence, in that 10 questions, one of the questions is, so what sort of budget do you have to put towards this? That's in the developmental area. It's not in the transactional interview. So if you find that out up front, even if people say not much, you say, what's not much? Then you may be able to help them find money as well. So don't be scared to help them find money. Um, you have to find money in your own business for a time being as well. I mean, Landy and I had to find some money just recently because of COVID. We haven't owned a car for five years, so we had to go and buy a car because now we're stuck in one position. So we had to go and find money for a car. Guess where we found it from? One, we found it from not having to rent a car, so there was part of the car when we're in different places. And number two, we upgraded all of our software we use. And by changing software providers, even though it was a bit of effort and work, we saved enough money to buy a car. So, you know, you can always find money in things that you're doing. So have those tough conversations. Um, great. So anybody here like to share? Let me just put you on, on full share so I can view you all. Put you on gallery. Um, just raise your hand if you've got a, a presentation, a brochure or something. Robert, you're, you're there, so fire away. What have you got? You're on mute. I've got a, a final draft from the designer for my top team training business. Okay, so what did you want to show me? Can I do a screen share? Yeah, Paul, I'll just give you screen sharing rights. Hang on a sec. Okay, you should have screen sharing rights now. So this will be really good to just go through this and, and have a quick look for everybody. Okay, so the cover's great, keep going. Right, you're not using the, the real estate on this page well enough. Keep going. So in other words, the, the, it's your eyes gonna go to all of the words rather than going to something specific. Um, so I would take engaged and inspired sales teams exceed targets and make that really big. Okay, go to yep. the next one. No, not enough pictures, no visuals, I'm, I'm lost. Okay. Needs visuals, okay. 
visuals, 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 visuals. So you have to tell a story. So you've got way too much words on this. Just go up for me a minute. Go to the first page where I was, which where I was sort of saying about, yep, no, go down, yep, go down to the audit. Right, if you can explain the audit as a visual and have those three bullet points behind it somewhere, that can work. Go to masterclass. Right, this, this probably needs to be over more pages and it needs more visuals. Okay. Okay, go to the next one. Uh, this needs a blueprint, the TTT model. So I'm not seeing the TTTs here. So this, if benefits of the TTT model, I need to see the TTT blueprint. Yep. Okay, so that was great. Thanks. Uh, hopefully that's yep. all. And that's fine. Yep. That page is fine. Anyone else like to um, share something whilst I've got you on the call for a couple of minutes or ask a question? People are too scared now, Robert, you're too brave. Garth's back on camera, but uh, I'm not seeing him ask a question. Okay, Sarah, can I say, I will email you the costs later. I'll get a bit, I get a bit stressed at the end point of the call. No, <laughs> it's not gonna work. Now, you don't have a sales problem, which is great. I mean. You have more clients coming at you left, right, and center. There's your smiley face. But uh, no, you can't say that. I'll email you the costs later. Um, what you can say is you can say from, yeah, Garth, I'll come to you in a sec. Um, you can say, Sarah, um, if you do your research internationally, here's some price points. Um, or you can base it and give them price points and then you sit yourself in the middle area of that and you literally tell them it's because you live in a country that you know has um, a, a more cost effective standard of living you could do that um, you can do it visually i like to do mine visually so i always put the price on the screen um, and i try and make it as big as i can on the screen um, so that way it really helps the other thing that you can do which really works is you use analogies so you know if people weren't um, publishing their book through you, what else would they be doing? Um, and then so, you know, if you look at training course, so, so that's where if you saw my slide with the average uh, MBA now costs $80,000, we're not $80,000. So, but we've got a comparison against what that cost is. So, you know, if I was um, trying to bring on a circle of excellence member, I could say to you, well, you could go and uh, buy a franchise and that's gonna, you know, at McDonald's, that's gonna cost you a million dollars or you could buy an MBA, that's gonna cost you 80,000 or you could come through this process, which is gonna give you so much more of what you want at a, you know, just a, a portion of the price. So, you know, you definitely should be that way. Um, okay, Garth, did you wanna share your screen? Is that what you wanted to do? You're on mute by the way, Garth. Yeah, Mike, this is a screen that I use just uh, to introduce myself in our business networking group meetings. Okay, the only thing I would probably do there, um, it says everything it needs to, but if you, I, I'd probably do two things. So number one is I would probably increase the size of your photo it's just a little small and on a Zoom screen, it's a little difficult to look at, but it's a good photo. Secondly, is I'd take your three sentences, what excites me is helping business owners to grow and I'd bold some words. So excites, I'd bold and I'd maybe change that to black, you know, so bold and black, so it stands out. And I'd uh, grow, I'd do that with that word. Many benefits, I would do that to that one um, in the second sentence no strings attached, I'd do that in the third one. And then, so what people are gonna see is they're just gonna see that. They're gonna see excites, grow, benefits, no strings attached. That's what's gonna psychologically 
they're going to see when they look at that. Um, Sarah says you're going to take off you take off contact details. For what Garth does, um, he definitely should have the contact details on there. But for most of you, definitely not. You're quite right. You know, an end screen in a presentation that has your contact details. No, you're better off having a QR code that people can photograph and take some straight to your website contact page. That that's much stronger. Okay, any other final questions from anybody? Um, have you found that useful today? Lots of nods, thumbs up, good. So great, thanks for the comments. So as we bring this to a, to a close, just think of this as sales psychology. Think of it as if you are sitting in, at the end of the sales call and what you would expect to see if you're that person on the end what you do when you look at something. And, you know, whilst um, both Robert, Heather and myself have all got the octopus slides at the back, essentially all you're seeing is the, the Oki, the octopus. So all you're really seeing is the octopus. And so you've got to realize that things are going to jump out at people. So using pictures, all of your backgrounds, they're subliminal. You know, I look at Philippe's background here and, I, you know, I see his blueprints on there. I look at Terence's, I see a, a bridge there. I look at Paula's and I see the books there. I look at Sarah's and it's appropriate because you're in the book business, okay? So just making sure that you've got things around you, particularly when you're selling, that just make people feel comfortable is probably the most important thing. So this is recorded now. Um, it's going to be loaded up to the groups. You can go back and check through it as well. And uh, thanks, everybody, for being on the call today. I wish you all the very best and have a lovely week. And next week, you have Jonathan Lau on the call. So look forward to that. He's fantastic. See you around. Bye. Thanks, Mike.